Hello friends and welcome to Virtual Strangers 38. I'm your host Wes. With me as always, my good friend Roots. Roots, how's the week been treating you, sir? Ah, uh, good, good. I uh, actually have a full weekend, so that's exciting. And uh, tell just snowstorms coming in, so I'm going to do some VR tomorrow. It's going to be a nice snuggly VR day. And I'm not going to let your jinx affect me You're trying to make my power go out. It's not going to happen. Don't even say that. That would be the worst nightmare. You, yeah. you see, if you had a quest, though, it would be no concern. Because then you would at least have two good solid hours of VR uh, while the men are outside working in the cold to restore your power. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, brother, I am tired, Roots. I stayed up too late last night watching the Video Game Awards. Did you catch the VGAs? No, I didn't get a chance to catch them, but um, I did see people discussing a lot of stuff in the uh, Discord and then on Reddit. And uh, it was, I guess, it was amazing um, the news, right? Some things that we were even discussing that no one's even talking about, which will come up down the list. But, man, there was a lot of news. There was actually a, a few things. VR related, but none so big as the big reveal of the additional footage of Half Life Alex. And I just got to say, Roots, upon watching the new footage of Half Life Alex, oh, wait a minute. There was no new footage of Half Life Alex because at 5 30 Eastern Time last night, just three hours before the Video Game Awards started, uh, Valve pulled out. They decided that they weren't going to show, that they weren't going to show any footage, that they weren't going to show up. So, uh, yeah, and the, the best part about it is I had no idea. I watched this whole thing waiting on that footage. And at the end of the day, it never came. Uh, Roots, were you aware uh, at the time that the uh, Half-Life Alex footage was not going to be coming? Uh, I saw something on Reddit or I saw a post that was talking about it or pontificating on what the reasons were. As a matter of fact, um, I was sitting here. The reason I didn't watch it, I was playing Red Dead Redemption with uh, 2 with my son. And and um, we were talking about that. And... Uh, we were just coming up with some ideas of what or he was saying, but uh, no, it's it's weird. Uh, I don't know why they didn't um, show it, but uh, you had me freaked out for a second there because I really thought, oh my God, did I not pull footage? I didn't know that there was footage, <laughs> um, but uh, that's crazy. No, uh, I mean, if you think about uh, how Valve is, it's really not all that surprising. They like to uh, cancel and delay. It's kind of their thing um tyler mcvicker the uh the gentleman from the valve news network who basically told us that half-life alex was coming uh, a long time ago uh, based on his own research uh, he had a theory that he put forth as to why they didn't show up and he said interestingly that it was because of boneworks that the reveal during the video game awards was supposed to to be gameplay footage and uh that they didn't show it because all of the gameplay footage that they have up until this point is teleport only because we, as we all know this game was developed as a teleport game and they're now trying to add in full locomotion but uh tyler's theory is that uh you know boneworks is full loco and they even go so far when you're in the tutorial. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but they kind of poke fun at teleport. Like uh, you're in this museum and they're showing how you used to have to move around, but you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's Tyler's theory is that uh, I guess he's thought that uh, it would be a bad look. Um, seems a little petty to me, but I guess it's possible. What do you think? I guess so. I mean, I don't know. He was right about a lot of other things. You know, I know um, some of the other news that we're going to be talking about, people were saying that I think he was the first one to, to say stuff about as well, and people are already shitting all over it, forgetting about Half-Life Alex news six months or a year ago or whenever it was. Um, but yeah, I guess that is a, 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 I don't know, maybe it could be all just hype anyway, you know, get everybody talking about it, and oh, everyone's now talking about the footage, and then um, why it wasn't there and then they released footage the next time and it's just phenomenal. I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different things, but
but uh, um, it's weird that it was three and a half. I mean, if that was the reason, uh, wouldn't you think they could have known sooner than three and a half hours before? You know what I mean? That doesn't, that would be my only reason I would say that doesn't line up with reality. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, they don't seem like the, the Valve as a company, they don't really seem like the type who would change their plans just so that they wouldn't upset a few gamers. Um, you know, just the fact that this game is in VR says a lot about what they think about ruffling feathers because they knew making this VR was going to ex upset a lot of flat gamers. And maybe, maybe that, I mean, if it is the teleport thing and they didn't want to just feature a teleport only game, maybe it has more to do with uh, turning off flat gamers than it does actually the, the VR crowd because, you know, uh, you, you know, that's one of those things about VR that, that flat gamers tend to dislike as they come over is uh is the teleportation floating hands teleportation all the stuff that's different from what they're used to you know yeah it would actually make more sense from that perspective uh because um let's face it the flat gamers are um they need a safe space and uh you don't want to upset them they get a little pissed off uh but no it, it makes sense uh i don't know i don't know so it'll be interesting to see what uh what time tells, I guess, on what we see more footage of um, uh, locomotion-wise, right? Yeah, it may be a while. I mean, according to Mr. McVicker, um, they're not very far along into putting in the, uh, the locomotion at this point. Apparently, uh, it doesn't work very well right now, which I find to be mind-boggling because this is uh, basic stuff, right? Lo full locomotion, most... Uh, most indie devs these days know how to do that, let alone a company like Valve. Right. So three and a half hours, though, like you just figured out that it didn't work three and a half hours before. Oh, stop the presses. We got to get change everything, you know. Um, and usually Valve, at least from what I've seen, they don't like to be. They like to be dropping the huge news, not you know pulling shit. But I mean, I, like I said, it could be other reasons, but. Um, that just seems weird to me that the time wise and, uh, um, especially what you said that they're not even close, you know, it's not like, oh, they're really close and they, they thought they had it, but if they're not even close, then why would they wait till right before to, to cancel it? That just seems weird to me. Yeah. They probably knew before then that they weren't going to show. They probably wanted to wait a little closer to show time just so, uh, they don't, turn a lot of people off and cause people not to tune in uh, to the Game Awards. But uh, assuming that this theory is correct, and that's a big assumption, I'm not saying I think that this is why they they decided to pull out, but let's assume that it is that. Uh, I would imagine that they were probably trying to parse together a video with footage, but uh, all stationary, no locomotion at all, you know what I mean? Uh, and then, the, you know, then comes the point of acceptance, like, okay, I'm not going to get this done, not up to our standards. So I'd rather just show up or, or not show up as to show up half-assed. This is half-life, not half-assed. And, uh, yeah. And let's be assume, honest. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was, I was just going to reiterate, assuming that that this is the reason that's probably something uh, along those lines yeah you know and um like you said they're not going to want to do it half fast and it's uh we're three months away from release so um everybody's already hyped they're buying headsets by the fucking thousands you know and um i don't think that uh them showing a uh, trailer was going to make or break anything today or yesterday um, so that was probably what they might their mindset and you nailed it. They just want to make sure that, that when they do drop more footage, it's just like this where everyone's like, Oh my God, not, Oh, this is decent. They pieced together the best they could do, you know? So. Right. They, they, their, their intention with this game is to win over as many gamers as they can and bring them into vr and i do think that it's a, a long-term plan i think that half-life alex and valve index 
is just the start of their plan going over probably the next four or five years. Uh, this is the impact that they're trying to make in the uh, the video game space, and uh, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, we do have a, a tidbit uh, of actual news from Half Life Alex um, speaking to the uh, Push Square publication this past week. Uh, Half Life Alex designer Greg Coomer said that the initial release of Half Life Alex will be available for Steam VR only. But he also w went on to say, We believe that Sony's VR platform has been a huge success for the medium, and we assume that lots of Sony customers would love to experience this new chapter of Half Life. So it sounds like, uh, you know, there's nothing set in stone right now. But uh, they're certainly not ruling out that Half-Life Alex could one day come to PlayStation VR. Yeah, PS5, you know, next November. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, I would I would actually be surprised if it even came that soon. I would I would imagine that this would probably be a uh, PSVR 2 title. Because, you know, Val, Val, there is a precedent. Valve has brought their titles to console in years past they had the of course the orange box which was a collection of uh, a couple of their more popular titles including half-life 2 and then the, i don't remember maybe it was left for dead or one of those other games they they also published on ps3 slash xbox 360 so they've they brought it over to console before and if if we believe them and what they're truly trying to do is push the the VR medium forward and help it to progress. Certainly you'd think they'd want to be involved in console VR because, you know, at least as of today, uh, console VR still by far has the numbers yeah. as far as the amount of headsets. I was there. reading an article though, and they were showing um, just different titles and stuff from developers and what uh, people are buying. Um, percentage wise and a lot of the the stuff being bought is heavily on the quest quest is making a huge push and i would be surprised if we are able to say that um this time next year the same you know what i mean i think quest will be that much closer or passing up playstation but i mean um we'll see yeah uh they're definitely making up a lot of ground especially uh in the in the West, um, oh, I read an article yesterday about uh, we've got some metrics from Google search terms during the holiday shopping season, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and so forth. Uh, Oculus Quest pretty much crushed all the other headsets in North America uh, during that period, uh, but worldwide, actually, Sony. Uh, Sony won. I mean, Sony won barely worldwide. Like they were here, and Quest was here. It was very close. But uh, when when you talk about America, like it was like Quest up here and PSVR down here. So they're they're definitely making a headway. Uh, we're we're assuming that those searches equal interest, which equals sales. Uh, so Quest is certainly making headway. But they've got a pretty big hole to dig their way out of because we can only assume that, that uh, uh, by now PSVR has crossed 5 million headsets out there. And that's uh, that's nothing to sneeze at, 5 million. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's a good time to be alive in VR, right? Yeah, man. It's, it's a good time to uh, ponder the possibility of console VR. You know, a few years back... Uh, when Xbox, well, I guess not a few years back, last year and the year before, 2018, uh, when Microsoft started buying up all these different game studios, uh, it, it kind of seemed to us from inside of our bubble that we might be getting Xbox VR because they picked up a few notable VR developers, uh, most prominent among them being Ninja Theory, and uh, when they picked up these these developers, we thought, great, finally, on the next generation, we might see Xbox VR. 
And then uh, in recent days, as you know, Phil Spencer has come out and uh, made some comments that are kind of discouraging to me and uh, to a lot of people out there. It seems like maybe not. Uh, maybe we won't be seeing uh, VR support for the new Xbox after all. I found that annoying. But now, having watched the Video Game Awards, I'm pretty sure Mr. Spencer is just trying to piss me off. <laughs> because uh, after he uh, officially announced the Xbox Series X, which is what the next Xbox is going to be called, the Series X, he also announced the initial launch title, the first launch title for the new Xbox platform. And that title was Sinuous Saga Hellblade 2. Roots, this guy is just trying to make me fly to Washington and punch him in the mouth, isn't he? I think he's trying to drag you back into flat gaming, dude. He's like trying to pull you back in. He's he's nuzzling you into the, the new Hellblade 2 and man this thing looks amazing now as i'm looking at this uh is it um i'm assuming because it's xbox it'll be on pc as well and does that mean we'll still be able to play it in vr that's the question right because the original wasn't even um vr native they had to, it was added correct that that is correct but uh they uh well that that Let's start with that, what you said initially, and that's really pretty much the whole reason uh, I put this on the show today. Uh, let's assume a couple of things. Let's assume that this is coming to PC, so we're not going to need to buy a console to play it. And let's assume that we know for certain that this is not ever going to be a VR game. Uh, do you play this flat, Roots? Mm, I don't think I do, just because... Um... I, I, what was so good about it was the in VR. It was so beautiful. And, you know, I, um, I just, uh, the gameplay for me wasn't as phenomenal as, as how beautiful and everything I, the game was to me. So I probably wouldn't. I, I, you know, I've, I've been playing Red Dead Redemption, Sea of Thieves, you know, um, so I don't know. Maybe if I had access to it, I'd try it anyway. I don't know. Uh, well, I I'm actually, you know, and you know, I never flat game. I actually think I'm coming down on the other side of this one because Hellblade, one of my very favorite VR games. I love Hellblade so much, and uh, it just tears my heart out to see that this is going to be an Xbox game, but it's not going to be a VR game, or at least initially. Uh, so I think if I was 100% sure and knew that it wasn't ever going to be a VR game, I might consider playing this flat because, uh, as you know, this game, it wasn't all about the visuals, even more so than how beautiful the game looked. Uh, the audio is really what sticks out about this game, and I can only imagine that the 3D audio is still going to be in there, right? Yeah, but it would... I don't know. I guess... You know, I guess it would still be as good. The story was really phenomenal, and it was all weird and creepy. Um, you know, I didn't finish the whole game, so maybe that's the, you know, part of the problem too. If I had it was invested in the whole story, I'd be like, man, I need to know where this is going. I just know this bitch is crazy, and she's wandering around with sh hearing shit in her head. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I just think this news was huge and I would assume it's definitely come to PC just because everything Xbox comes out on PC or at least as far as I've seen. Um, but uh, whether it's in VR or not is up in the air. I just don't, I don't know why they wouldn't, you know, they've already, they've got the experience. They, it was so well received in the first one. And, and I don't, unless Xbox is like, you know what, you just cannot do it because we're just not VR. Um, I think they would still want to do it maybe after the fact. It might be a year after it comes out. But uh, VR, I think it'll eventually be in VR. That's my my yeah. gut instinct. So I think that there's at least a good enough chance that that might happen uh, to keep me from playing it flat. Because I, I, you know, I don't want to ruin this game. If it's coming to VR, even if it takes it three years, I'd rather just wait. Because that's the difference, you know. It, the VR makes that much of a difference with these games, and uh, 
man, I hope it doesn't take that long, but I'm I'm pretty sure that it probably will because we're talking about a 2020 console release. The uh, the pretty much, you know, it's what Xbox is hanging their hat on. This is their first uh, big release for the new console. They're getting their their money's worth from Ninja Theory. They probably bought Ninja Theory based on the strength of Hellblade alone. They probably checked that game out, saw how great it was, and said, you know what? This is a company worth picking up. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it's really it's up in the air here. We know that these guys at Ninja Theory are fans of VR, that they do like the medium. They pretty much put Hellblade 1 in VR just because they wanted to, because it would be cool. And, uh, you, know, I mean, you know, they didn't do it for the money because, you know, how much money can you realistically get from uh, selling PC VR game? You know, it, it, for a company like that, it's it's not enough. Uh, obviously, they just wanted to make something cool. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's it's possible, maybe even likely that one day we will see this in VR. But I, I think it'll be probably 2022 before we get to that point maybe late 2021 um i think that it's more likely even today i think that it's more likely that we'll see xbox vr before we see senua sacrifice on pc yeah think about this though um you know things are a little bit different this time of year than last time in the year as far as uh games and stuff and you've got um all these people running out and buying headsets for alex and it's such a huge event and every one of those people are are triple a gamers right so like a lot of things like this where you could if you could port it and you could time it right you could nail every one of those people and um you would i think marketing wise or just as a company it'd be stupid not to think of that as well if they could get it out um and how good is this game going to be compared coming out now like with the, all the updated uh techniques and and engines compared to the last one um i i do want to see it in vr i think that it'll blow us away again right i mean they really know what they're doing that water looks amazing roots needs to play it today and it's years away and i don't know what to do uh, yeah according to uh mr spencer this entire trailer was captured uh, from the game engine so it's not like uh manufactured you know stuff just for the trailer this was all done inside the game engine that they used to make this game wow looks amazing doesn't it yeah we're just getting man when i'm getting goosebumps we're getting to the point where uh you know these games are just so amazing and uh um i can't wait to see this in vr i'm gonna start putting it out there in faith it's coming and we'll just wait, right? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, did, did you catch a, a, a glimpse of the image of the new Xbox? Did you see what it looks like? Uh, I saw people in the Discord talking about it being w wide and big or something. And, you know, what I think is funny is they're talking about it being like a PC. <laughs> it's like it's like it's, a PC. That's what it is. And it's like, well, what's the point of having a why not just get a PC then and you can play VR, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, aside it's pretty from much what it is, it's a pretty much a, a budget PC. Yeah. It's pretty much exactly what it is. I agree with what people in the discord were saying. It's just not like you, I think it was Alex was saying, you know, you get a console so that it can slow. It's sleek, you know, and I think main fans, you can even turn it on its side or something. I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. It's too big, man. It's too big. I, you know, for, for as far as I'm concerned, I really don't care. It could be, it, it can be huge. It could be small. It doesn't matter to me. I'm buying for performance, and apparently that's what Xbox is uh, is going for this time. They're they're going for performance, and, and you know, let's be honest. The Xbox has always been, you know, as far as hardware goes, uh, superior. At least in most generations, the Xboxes are normally more powerful than the playstations but for whatever reason games tend to run better on the the sony hardware despite mm -hmm. not not having uh as, as high as specs as the xbox yeah, it's just like nintendo you know certain companies they they're really good at um 
utilizing the the hardware they have um and they almost have to be at least you know and uh um even oculus has shown us as well with asw and stuff it's just some companies are better at having running their their hardware and uh, sony does a really good job so. yeah and then on top of that you know sony's always had the advantage when it comes to first party exclusive software and uh that is where microsoft seems to be focusing and uh, they're definitely planning on fighting back this generation and what you're looking at right now is the first shot yeah yeah i'll definitely tell you what this is a, a first good title and that was one of the things that even a week or two ago i was saying why would you buy an xbox there's no titles you know but if they keep stacking them like this uh you know maybe i would want to pick up an xbox you know so yeah well they, they've got this did you see the uh you probably didn't that they uh they, they had a trailer for a new uh gears of war game too but it wasn't like normal gears of war it was like a strategy game like a rts hmm. and uh, uh i thought it was weird looking no i see i didn't i i never even played gears of war too much so like all the exclusives to xbox i really never felt drawn like oh i need to go out even when i was a flat gamer it's like oh i gotta go get xbox so i can play their exclusives um but i sure felt that way about sony um but uh you know again this if they're this is an indication of where they're going with it uh they're focusing on the right things the software and the hardware and uh be exciting to see maybe they will some surprise maybe their whole strategy is just to downplay it for the next year and then blow sony away yeah. you know well uh you know what we always say competition is always good so i hope xbox does great i hope their machine is super powerful i hope they release an awesome a bunch of great titles for it right off the bat and uh i hope they come out with a vr headset and that it's just awesome i hope i hope that they prove to be a worthy adversary for sony in every department and uh because that's only going to make sony better in the long run what about google i'm no, just kidding google. <laughs> they're, they're uh i think they're a generation ahead i think yeah. that uh i think that their technology is great and uh, i think microsoft and sony will have awesome streaming services in about seven years yeah all right so uh moving on before we get away from all of this and get into some cold hard facts i want to mention one more bit of speculation that i pulled off of the newswire this week uh, and I want to go back to Tyler McVicker. As we mentioned before, he did accurately predict uh, Half-Life Alex a long time ago. He's been telling us forever that Half-Life VR is real. Half-Life VR is coming. And just this past month, he was vindicated. He was, giving, uh, he was given some... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Inside credibility. Uh, oh, okay. Some credibility. He has credibility now, at least to some extent. Well, uh, he's not. Uh, he hasn't retired from the uh, speculation business or the rumors business or, as he would call it, the leaks business, because he has once again uh, teased a new game coming from Valve. And as we all know, Valve have already said that they have three major flagship VR titles in the works uh, to be released over the next couple of years. And according to Mr. McVicker, Left 4 Dead VR is the second uh, title that we're going to be getting. Uh, this uh, rumor originated uh, a few weeks ago from a, a data mining operation, much like the one that uncovered uh, the information about Half-Life Half VR, uh, that same sort of data mining, they've found things that seem to point to, um, like I said, Left 4 Dead VR being in the works. And then just a few days ago, Mr. McVicker tweeted out, quote, Left 4 Dead VR is real. So, Roots, uh, were you a Left 4 Dead fan? 
are you excited about the prospects of getting to play Left 4 Dead in VR? Ah, I never played Left 4 Dead. You know, I've played many zombie games. Dying Light um, is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, but um, this video is Vorpex Left 4 Dead 2. And, and as I was watching it, I was like, fuck, man, I want to play this. I almost want to go buy the game and play it in Vorpex, the second one here. But uh, yeah, I think um, I, I'm really psyched to see what uh what valve would do with a zombie game um of this nature and uh makes me wonder like i mean I, there's so many titles <laughs> half-life 2 left for dead like the fuck was roots doing <laughs> for right. like a decade or two like i missed all these amazing time i mean i know i had kids and they were little and i was i got sucked into world of warcraft for a decade that took me away from everything for for a while but uh Man, I can't believe I missed some amazing titles like this, and uh, um, I'm really hoping this this rumor's true. I, I'm leaning towards uh, it being a credible um, thing because what else is Valve going to do? This is one of the biggest things they could put out besides Portal and, of course, Half Life, right? Yeah, I'd say Portal's probably going to be number three, even though the Half Life developers recently said that. Uh, it's a bit problematic to put a game like Portal in VR. They're afraid of sickness and and whatnot. But uh, yeah, interesting here. I mean, it's an interesting choice. Uh, we we have quite a few zombie shooters in VR, and we're getting more. But the thing about it is, and we've said it before, nobody's got it right yet. Nobody's put out the kind of zombie apocalypse game that we want and while we all believe that the walking dead saints and sinners is going to be that game in uh, a little over a month's time left for dead uh well, the feature that left for dead is known for is most likely going to be notably absent in walking dead saints and sinners and what this game is known for is co-op Right. That's why this game got so popular because it was one of the very first, uh, you know, four-player co-op shooter games uh, on PC. So uh, that there, you know, that's enough alone to pique my interest, right? Yeah, because there's not any games like this in in uh, multiplayer that's would be this amazing. Um, like even. Uh, I mean, they've got some games like, you know, even Seeking Dawn, I think you can get three people and there's a couple of games you can get three people, maybe even four, but nothing like this on this level. And uh, and Valve is going to deliver everything on a triple AAA level. And that includes quests and equipment, guns, knives, all the shit, you know, um, that's what we forget about. There's, you know, most of these VR games up until recently um, they've been, even if they were amazing, they were very, very shallow. The quests were very basic to some extent. They didn't go that deep. You didn't have that reason to go back in over and over and over again. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this will probably take another decade of Roots' life, I guess, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, uh, we will. And, you know, you said this is Left for Dead 2. Mm-hmm. Man, this looks a lot like a four-player Arizona Sunshine, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks a lot like um, Call of Duties as well. I mean, of course, they didn't have all the weapons with um, smacking stuff around. But, yeah, it looks like uh, – it just looks like I, I can't imagine this game um, built from the ground up because this is clearly, you know, Vorpex with a controller. Um, but uh, – or at least I guess this guy's using keyboard. But uh, it's definitely looks amazing. And uh, um, like I said, I have to ask Jarillo to see if he's played this one or not because it might be a game that I'd be interested in checking out um, on Vorpex, you know? looks very smooth. It, it does. It looks like it's running very smoothly. Uh, I think the only thing with this is going to be uh, how does the controller feel if there's no hand presence in a game like this? Uh, most of the time, you know, you can get away with controller base gameplay but that's with you know uh it's not modded you know i'm not talking about vorpex i've never tried vorpex the games that uh i've played in vr with the controller were meant to be played in vr with the controller 
and that's not necessarily the case here. So mm. really, we'd have to play it to find out. Yeah, true. True. All right. Well, definitely uh, has my interest peaked. Uh, I'm very curious about the timing of it. When we w- might get this game? Is it going to come out after uh, after the fall? Because if I'm not mistaken, after the fall is uh, four player co op. Uh, you know, it's not a classic zombie apocalypse shooter, but uh, it's a variation. It's kind of a spin off from your classic zombie apocalypse shooter. So, uh, obviously, even if Valve does follow that, this is Valve. So, we're kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be able to do it better than Vertigo Games anyway. You know what's funny is, like, I have no idea what the fuck to expect as far as, like, you you were saying earlier, okay, this game is probably a year or two away. In my mind, you know, like, June could come along and they could drop this fucker, you know? Like, they just, there is no rhyme or reason to how they're doing any of the VR shit anymore. Um, It's just shit drops, games don't, they don't talk about stuff, they talked about alex dropped and then it was going to be released three months later Uh, you know uh, you know we really could see this game in 2020 um anytime in that year and i'm not saying or left for dead and of course we're speculating that it even exists or it's coming out but um i'm just making the point that you know there is no uh if this was a flat game that they were talking about left for a new left for dead three or four or whatever the fuck is in the series now um, there's no way they would drop the trailer and and then it comes out three months later. Um, that's just what happens in VR. So, yeah. Anyway, one to watch out for. Uh, subscribe to the Valve News Network if you're uh, if you're highly interested in news on Half Life Alex and uh, a potential Left 4 Dead VR. And subscribe to Virtual Strangers if you want to stay up to date on all things yep. VR. All right, I think that's going to wrap up the speculation section of this week's show. And I think it's about time that we move on into some actual real VR games that we actually have today. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, so first of all, you know, what else are we going to talk about? But the elephant in the room, this past Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Tuesday. The 10th of December, Stress Level Zero finally released Boneworks. And um, starting off, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Even though I know that it has come out to some mixed reviews, most people uh, were pretty positive about it. And... uh, I'm one of those people. I had a blast in this game, Roots. What about you? Yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know what people would be upset about for the most part. I mean, I guess if you're, I mean, it tells you right off the bat if you don't have your VR legs. Um, actually, it doesn't say that. It just says it's for experienced VR veterans. Um, and it's real because even if you weren't moving around locomotion and the physics or whatever, but Sometimes you're climbing, man, and your arms are doing some weird fucking shit, man. And you're, it's very bizarre and it can be very jarring. And I felt absolutely no sickness whatsoever. Um, but I've heard that a lot of people were, uh, um, even people that thought they had VR legs, um, had to take breaks, uh, significant breaks because they were getting, um, you know, a little bit nauseous. Yeah, I kind of get that because everything in this game has weight. It's kind of the gimmick of this game is that everything has weight. There's gravity programmed into the game, and that includes your body. So sometimes some of the movements that you're making in real life, uh, your in-game body has a little delay on it. And I can see where that might would make uh, some people ill. But uh, like you, I didn't really have any issues with it. my big takeaway from this thing was, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. This game has a certain feeling to it that I haven't felt in another game. And it's sure some of it is the physics of it. But I really think more than anything, uh, it's the, the level of presence that I felt when I was in this game. I felt uh, more so than in most other games. I felt like I was in 
this place and it's like i said it's not just the physics but the uh the 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 video quality the audio quality everything's so sharp and sounds uh so uh so real and um and beyond that unlike games like you know, Stormland and Asgard's Wrath and these other great AAA games that we've had here lately. This space that you're in here, it seems more like a realistic place. It's like a place that I could actually envision myself being in it, you know, obviously 20 years down the line. But we don't have technology that we know of right now that's anywhere near what they display in this game. It is a science fiction game, but unlike... Uh, Stormland and uh, Asgard's Wrath, which really play on the fantasy aspect of things. This game seems a bit more grounded, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I would submit that um, a lot of what makes this game so immersive is, you know, everything being interactive. Like I even was going through, and I was like knocking everything off of shelves and shit. And I was just, I mean, I spent like five minutes rolling blocks around and just feeling the physics of it and uh and they say the real gem of this game or the real way to play this game um is to get really good at climbing like just to, you know i've skipped shit i i mean i there was all sorts of things i probably shouldn't have been doing i was climbing all over the place um and that's why i was saying you know you start to climb up that uh, like a fence or that weird wall that's got uh grippy stuff on it um your arms don't they drag and and they don't match up to what your body would do and it's just very bizarre um but uh and then the other the one thing that really bothered me was the uh um uh, not really bothered me but it was just the way like you said the weight sometimes the the weight on the heavier items like the sledgehammer even when you grabbed it with both hands it didn't feel right like um i'm kind of hoping they fine-tune some of the um the gravity over time if the, if that's even a thing if they're able to and just make it feel a little bit more realistic um, because they nailed it for most of the weapons, the baseball bat, the different stuff. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, this is, this game was definitely um, one of my favorite games I've been playing lately. So. Yeah. I think that if you want to talk about my main complaint, really my only big complaint with this game uh we would have to talk about the gravity. We'd have to talk about the weight. And let me just start off by saying that I think that it's a brilliant concept. I really think that without the physics, without the gravity, this game, like you said, is just a mediocre game. It's just another game. But that adds so much to uh, the immersiveness of this game and uh, the, the feeling of presence that you have in it. And just the the overall feeling when you play it, that it's a it's a completely unique experience, and more so than anything, that's what I'm looking for when I get a new game. Now, is I'm looking for something completely unique. Completely unique. Now, with that said, you know I'd never want to play this without that weight feature. I do feel like they've kind of overdid it a little bit. It's a little too. Uh, it's a little too heavy and th this is what I'm trying to convey here. And it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, the concept is a good one. Uh, I, I get the philosophy that you want to make the game as realistic as possible by making the physics of the game as close to real life as possible. But what they're failing to account for is the, the uh the human body the sensory aspect of it you, see you can build immersion by giving things weight like they would have in real life but you have to account for the fact that in real life the human body feels that weight and there's nothing that they can do with today's current technology that would allow us to feel that weight so at a certain point that weight, you know, as you add it, it becomes the game becomes more and more immersive. But as it gets to be too much, it creates a disconnect from what you're seeing in the game and feeling physically. And that disconnect breaks immersion. It has the opposite 
effect. So, for example, uh, I like to scavenge. I like to search and explore. And every time I play any kind of VR game, I'm looking through cabinets and, and searching things. And in this game in particular, there are file cabinets, just normal file cabinets. They're in every game. I always search through them. Now, in this game, what makes it different is these cabinets have weight. When you pull the drawer, uh, it doesn't just pull open like it's weightless. You have to really pull on it, and it affects the whole cabinet. Now, in real life, if I were opening a file cabinet, without even looking at it, I would feel that weight, but I would also feel when the drawer stopped and it catches the stop, I would feel that, and without even thinking about it, I would quit pulling. But in this game, there's no way for you to feel that door stop. So what happens is, is instead of it being like real life and you just quit pulling, in Boneworks, you keep pulling and it moves the cabinet. The cabinet moves, it tries to tip over. Every time I try to look in one of those drawers, I physically move the whole cabinet. Mm -hmm. Now I get it. I get why it's like that. It's because they wanted that, that cabinet to have a realistic weight to it. But if you don't account for uh, uh, the human reflex uh, when it comes to opening drawers or opening doors, it has the opposite effect. It breaks the immersion. I would, uh, I would really prefer that they allowed you to have a slider to maybe turn the weight down a little bit. Uh, I'm not suggesting get rid of it. It would suck if it even came close because it's pretty close right now to where I would want it to be. But I would like for there to be a slider to adjust the weight, make it maybe a little bit lighter. And I would like for there to be some concessions made for the human element. Uh, obviously, if I open a door in real life and I bump into it with my shoulder, I'm not going to keep pushing into it and close the door again, right? I'm going to walk around the door. Uh, that's not what happens in Boneworks, right? You open up the door and you smack it and it closes again. You open it up, you smack it and it closes again. They could fix that. They could make it so that the door, the drawers don't topple over when you pull them open. And if they would just make some small adjustments like that, this would probably be uh, one of the most uh, immersive games, if not the most immersive vr game that i've ever played yeah i would agree i think those things would actually really benefit and maybe that's something that they uh um can do in the future you know um i don't know now let's let's talk about uh one thing that i guess i almost forgot that uh actually it's, it's for people will be screaming at the at the video um one of the worst things that i've experienced that you didn't experience i think main fan experience actually i think alex no alex, alex hasn't played it a bunch of us have experienced it, and that's the uh, um, lack of checkpoints through these hour and a half levels. And uh, um, you know, you you fall or some kind of jank, you know, some kind of physics jank, and you end up dying to some stupid shit. And you start forty five minutes back, and I I got to a point where like last night I was like, fuck it, man, I'm I'm done. I might, I mean, watching this video, I want to go back and play it, but. Um, there's a big part of me that wants to wait till January when they've promised to patch it because I don't want to waste an hour and die to something stupid and have to do a bunch of shit over again. It's great if you make it through the first time and you don't die. But when you do die, it's a fucking nightmare. Um, yeah, that's my rant anyway. Roots rant. Yeah, I only had one real play session in this game last night. And... Uh... It was long. It was almost two hours that I played this game, and then I didn't realize it only felt like an hour. I was having so much fun in it, but uh, I had to quit playing. Hopefully, I won't have to replay too much. We'll see when I get back into it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that's a legitimate complaint. You shouldn't have to play a, a, an hour over again. And uh, to the developer's credit, they've heard these criticisms, and they, they are adding in... Uh, halfway points checkpoints in each of the levels so that uh that won't be a problem anymore yeah they said they thought you know when they were testing it they you know people were flying through it they weren't exploring they weren't messing around so what they deemed as a 30 minute level turned out to be or 45 minutes turned out to be an hour and a half almost 
pump for an average player and then you know you die halfway through it and it's they said you know 30 45 minutes i can see easily you could you know not have a checkpoint but um you know so yeah anyway uh, uh, an outstanding game way surpassed uh my expectations for it i thought it would be good uh but this is a great game i, I really really am enjoying it I, i'm excited to see where it goes from here and uh if it fulfills its potential uh if this game can somehow put together a story which i'm getting story elements so far in it i'm i'm finding clues to a backstory but i don't know how much it's going to play into the actual campaign but uh i think we might have another another game of the year candidate here and i'm absolutely being serious when i say that uh, i'm not saying that it's my game of the year don't get me wrong uh, i'm saying that it's in the conversation and i need to play more but uh man i had a blast playing this thing how, how about you did it live uh, yeah. up to your expectations it did actually it, i mean i i was really thinking it wasn't going to be the best um you know a lot of people thought it was going to be a tech demo and uh um i definitely don't think it's a tech demo i th it, i think you nailed it it's the way it feels um and the puzzles are next level it i mean just dragging shit around and having to figure out how to to you know there was like these platforms that were i had to figure out these boxes and drag them to keep the the things on the below to from moving to keep the platform stable and just things that you're you're just making you think in it and they're logical puzzles they're you know it's physics you know you're looking at it it's like okay you're trying to figure out how it would work in real life and that's what what makes them really cool so it definitely exceeded my expectations for sure yeah yeah that that's that, that was pretty much the thing for me is it was way better than i thought it was i put this thing on just basically to check it out for the show uh, i heard that some people had some mixed reaction to it so i really i thought okay well they're just telling themselves that they uh that, that they, the ones that like it are just liking it because they want to it's probably not that good and uh i couldn't have been more wrong this is this is uh this is one of the most unique games i've ever played uh, i can say that there's a reason why they said it sold 200 and i think i read this over 200,000 copies in three days or something that is insane for vr man especially since on the pc platform and this is again what i was telling you you know um i don't think six months ago that would have happened because i don't think there was that many people that had headsets man alex opened up the door and these you all these people that rushed out and got headsets were like okay what do i play you know and especially if they could buy indexes, they felt like they heard about Asgard's Wrath, they heard about Stormland, uh, what is Revive, and all the shit that goes with it. And you have this game that looks like a Half-Life game, kind of, and um, it's made for the index, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, it was a perfect storm. And uh, um, I think this is an indication of where we're at in VR um, currently, and... Uh, it's off to the races dude this is where it starts man yeah yeah absolutely blown away uh yeah i couldn't be more excited for the direction that vr is taking and man it's not stopping i mean we, we've got saints and sinners next month we've got iron man the month after that we've got half-life alex the month after that uh so many games that we know are coming in that window that we don't have exact dates for yet uh we've got you know, I'm not going to get off on another rant here, but we have all sorts of different VR investment taking place outside of the realm of gaming. Uh, loads of that sort of news recently. Uh, just good news every which way that we look. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Except for console VR. Console VR has seemed to have cooled off quite a bit and you know we, we reported last week that uh on tuesday we were going to have the next sony's state of play and uh we had a theory it was an either or theory if you'll remember we said either sony 
is going to have some really awesome kick-ass VR announcements for the state of play, or they're pretty much not going to have anything at all. Roots, which one was it? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure it was not nothing much at all, right? Pretty much didn't have anything at all. There was a couple of tidbits, and I'll go ahead and cover those. Uh, first of all, Dreams. Uh, again, uh, we talked about last week how the uh, uh, Dreams Media Molecule, the developer of Dreams, has come out recently saying that they aren't going to be able to support PlayStation VR at launch like they originally planned and that they were also taking the uh, the early access version out of the PlayStation Store so people can't buy into it for the uh, $30 early access version anymore after a certain date. It, it may even be gone already. Um, oh, God, I missed it. But uh, I got my copy, bro. I know. I keep I thinking I need to do it, and then I, I just don't. So. Anyway, if you'll remember last week... Uh, I found it interesting that Upload VR had interpreted these signs as meaning as meaning that it might be PlayStation 5 before we saw Dreams, but to me it seemed like just the opposite. It seemed like they were preparing for a launch, that they were cutting their losses, cutting off PlayStation VR, cutting off the early access copy, and bringing it to market. And uh, we were absolutely right about that when Roots... During Sony's place, uh, Sony's state of play this past Tuesday, we got the date for the full release of Dreams, and it's coming on Valentine's Day, twenty twenty. Roots. Oh um, wow, man! Yeah. You're gonna buy it for your wife? Oh, you already bought it for your wife, man. That's how romantic you are. You bought it ahead of time. You didn't even know, man. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> are you gonna uh, <laughs> mess with this any at all before it has VR support? Uh, I think it would still be cool to check out some of, I mean, I've seen some videos of some really cool experiences, but, um, probably not. I mean, it, I would be, I want to buy it before, you know, I want to get the cheaper price, but, uh, I'm like you, you've, you've said you've, there's stuff that's came out and you haven't even fired it up. Um, I want to be in the world. I don't want to look at them on the TV screen. I don't, you know, right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't even think I've booted this game up. I bought it to get a price break on it, period. Uh, you know, I'm, I might get bored one day and just go in there to check out some other people's creations. Um, because I think they are pretty liberal, at least at this point, about letting people, um, recreate copywritten characters and mm. things of that sort. Um, but uh, I'm sure that's all about the change with the, uh, full release. Anyway, uh, not the only tidbit we got. We got one other, and it, it was another game that we reported on last week, uh, Paper Beast. We got another new full trailer from Paper Beast, uh, and we got a launch window coming early, early 2020. Mm. Uh, Roots, did you see the new trailer? If so, what did you think? I did not actually. I didn't uh, didn't even see it come up in my thing when I looked for a trailer. So, well, I'll just say this about uh, about Paper Beast, and we'll go on. Um, the most the thing that I'm looking forward to the most about Paper Beast is uh, the pedigree of the developer. This guy has a reputation. He's uh, he's made some revolutionary video games. Uh, throughout the history of video games as I know them, you know, out of this world being the uh, the big one. But uh, really, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be looking forward to this very much at all. I mean, it looks nice uh, visually. It's a unique concept. I can tell that by looking at it. But the more footage I see of this, I'm not feeling it too much, man. It looks like it's going to get boring pretty quick to me. Yeah, it better be amazing story, man. Like, it doesn't even look like there is a story, right? Is there? I don't know. Uh, reading quotes uh, from the developer about this game, uh, it's hard to call it a game. 
It's mm-hmm. more of like an experience. Uh, he does say that there is a story being told, but there there's no written words. There's no dialogue. You the, the story is told through your interaction with this world, with these creatures. Uh, you have to explore and you basically just have to witness the events as they transpire and it tells a story. So it's a good concept. Um, I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to play in a sitting. I think I might have to take it in short bursts because, man, it looks like a slow burner. Yeah, well, it makes me have, I have a lot of questions to, to determine whether it's good. How long? How much? You know, like uh, th- those two things right there will determine whether I, I think it's really amazing or not. I mean, it, it can be, I mean, I, I love experiences, you know, some of my favorite things like Wolves in the Walls, obviously more of a story experience, but, um, you know, you can have a really cool experience, uh, be amazing. Um, but, you know, if it's like two hours of, of these creatures and shit I, with no story, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like you said, I might be finding myself looking at it, you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time. I don't know. All right. Well, we're, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't. I don't want to say too much negative about it without having played it. I will say that it looks beautiful. The lighting looks phenomenal. The art style is great. The clouds uh, during the sunset in a couple of these shots, just stunning. Um, but yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of uh, sameness going on with these different clips and trailers. They all are starting to look very very similar and that frightens me a little bit yeah especially when we were just talking about the importance of um bone works and you know out being outside the box i mean that's exactly what we're talking about the games of the year you know asgard's wrath stormland bone works each one of them thinks outside even pistol whip thinks outside the box in a unique way that um just keeps us guessing on what's coming next you know we have all these unique games um so it 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 becomes like you said harder to have the samey um i just want something to blow me away and i don't know if this one would be in that category maybe i'm i'm wrong and this will be just fucking phenomenal and i just do not want to miss it so we'll see well if you were a paper beast in one of these windy atmospheres you might be blown away. Yeah, that's that's where I'll be blown away. Some of these things are getting blown away, literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I want to know why there's sixes, a bunch of them in the sky. It's a conspiracy. I think it's. Uh, I don't know. Well, Some... you know, it's because of subliminal satanic messages, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in everything. Yeah, I saw it in uh, strawberry shortcake once. They had flowers oh. in the trees, and they were like clear as day six 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 everywhere all over it wow that's kind of crazy huh who would have thought strawberry shortcake yeah strawberry shortcake and slayer <laughs> totally mixed <laughs> all right uh mm. man roots tons of things come out i mean it wasn't just bone works it wasn't just stay to play we got the the layers of fear 2 came out that was totally awesome we're gonna come on that later uh we had from out of nowhere during the video game awards, uh, what was it called again? The uh, the uh, Path of the Warrior was announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, Budget Cuts Two came out on Thursday. Uh, shit, what else? Um, oh, there was tons, and there was also, and I, good catch on you because I didn't see this anywhere else. Uh, it was announced via the Oculus blog. Hello Puppets was released. Uh, Roots I I watched and read all about this and we were just talking about unique concepts and how important they are to to a good to having a good VR experience today now that the bar has been raised uh, we need something different this is pretty damn different isn't it yeah if anybody that's uh, I guess even if you're listening on the podcast on the, the audio version or if you're um, watching it you need to actually watch this video with with audio because like he finds that puppet and he puts it on and the puppet immediately starts berating him saying, <laughs> you know you walk in this creepy haunted house and you 
just the first thing he's put on this puppet and you fucked up and then it just goes crazy right and the story just seems very intriguing um it 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 just looks like it's it's got polish and production that um and uniqueness and the story sounds unique and it makes me excited to try it out you know yeah yeah this this seems right down my alley this is actually um if you had to put a genre on it it's a horror game but it's kind of like horror comedy there's some funny parts to it but uh here, here's the uh the concept it's been years since children's show mortimer's handyman was canceled and its cast off puppets have come to life with a vengeance your only hope lies in the hands of the somewhat less evil sock puppet scout uh and it goes on to say scout forms the game's focal point uh it says what happens when you replace one of the player's hands with an in-game persona so your right hand is literally going to be an npc yeah so uh talk about unique right yeah and and it's the story and the way she, the things that like um like i said you know she's like or you said she's helping you but um it's just it's just a very unique thing because if you're watching the trailer and you she's like telling you to at one point to run and and like it's just gonna it's like you're on an adventure with her you know and she's your sock puppet you know and uh, you got to protect yeah. her keep her safe and she's less she's not fully evil so you can trust her maybe so <laughs> yeah they said they were they originally uh had planned on this being uh, a lot sillier more of like a Tim Burton style deal. But as uh, they started play testing and got some feedback from some people, uh, they went more the route uh, of a traditional horror game. And uh, interesting, interestingly enough, this was originally planned to be part one of a trilogy uh, of, of different games, but they felt like they had so much here that it deserved just to be its own thing and they fully fleshed it out into its own game. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm hoping I want to try this uh, soon. This looks really good, and um, I know I uh, messaged. I think we messaged them for a key, and if not, I think I'm going to pick it up. And uh, if we get yeah. one, we can give it away. Uh, Hello Puppets again comes from Otherworld Interactive. It released on December 12th this past Thursday for twenty dollars exclusively on Oculus rift i think i don't even think this one's on quest i think this is rift exclusive wow this is a second game that 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 other game was rift exclusive correct the um shadow or i don't even know the uh, path of the warrior i don't know why i can't path remember that warrior. game man i just did a gameplay of it and i don't know how many times i had to restart because i kept forgetting what the fucking name is man make a better name that's all i gotta say um yeah and um, run it by Data legion yeah Data legion came out as well and it's the same deal rift exclusive right yeah so i mean this is a good time to be a rift owner outside of uh the rift controversy or facebook controversy uh, which we'll be getting to uh um on the monday show so. yeah we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the uh more disturbing headlines coming out of the facebook land this past week but anyway hello puppets it looks solid if you're the type of person who gets scared at uh things like five nights at freddy's stuff like that this might be something that you're you're interested in and even more so if you just like different experiences um if you like unique storytelling it doesn't get more unique than your right hand being a, a, a character in the game that's about as unique as you can get so uh i'm looking forward to being able to check this out at some point and if it looks like it appeals to you uh maybe you should check it out as well yeah driven by i want to know i want to i want to watch i want you to film a video of you playing this game because i know you'll enjoy it a lot so. yeah i'd like to see that as well <laughs> driven by plays that's right hello puppets all right i think we got one more title that we want to talk a little bit about and uh it's more news actually out of the video game awards a lot, like we said, a lot. There's stuff that I didn't even put on the rundown here. A lot of VR tidbits coming out of the uh, 
the game awards, the video game awards, but uh, none so big as the news that we learned about Beat Saber. Uh, this past week on the video game awards, uh, we retreated to some live music from a uh, punk band. Uh, it's kind of weird. I never really felt like they were much of a punk band, but most people regard Green Day as a punk band. And um, I was a fan of Green Day way back in the day when I was in high school. It's been many years since I was really into them, but I, I, I really did dig Green Day back in the day. What, what about you, Roots? Yeah. Did you ever get into Green Day? I did, actually. I, I mean, I couldn't tell you any of the songs right off the bat, um, but uh, I used to listen to all sorts of uh, their songs. So they're definitely, definitely cool that they keep bringing in um, such good music. And it only helps uh, the, the VR genre, especially once people, you know, the Beat Saber I started with is not the Beat Saber that exists today when people are coming into VR. And it's like, it's almost a completely different game. Triple A, it's got fucking 360 and all sorts of shit you can do. It's got a, you know, an actual campaign and um, mul tons and tons of music. And yeah, a lot of people could argue that when I first got in, I had they had the mod was a lot more popular. Um, but there's something about the tracks being professionally built with the actual music that you know what I mean. Like it's just different. Um, I think the tracks are better. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, my uh, my big my two big complaints about Beat Saber when I reviewed it, and there wasn't a whole lot to complain about. But my two real complaints is, one, the gameplay needs to be more diversified. There needs to be more happening than just standing there chopping these blocks. And uh, they've answered it with 360 mode, man. If they're coming from all directions, then uh, that that's some diversity. That's, that's something to give some real challenge to you, other than just making the blocks come faster. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my other big complaint with it was that there was no rock music on it at all, that it was all this electronic or, or, or dance music of some flavor, you know, all the tracks were dance tracks. And uh, now, not only are we getting some rock music, but we're getting some legit rock music from a legit artist. Uh, not dance music. Not at all. This is Green Day. It's uh, Which I, you know, with that said, they sang a new song, or at least one I wasn't familiar with, on the video game awards and it did not sound like green day to me uh, it sounded like pop music no well, let me ask you this when are they going to bring the slayer or like the metallica or you know like let's get some slayer. yeah some slayer man like <laughs> yeah can you imagine i guarantee you, man that'd be crazy some crazy shit and wes would probably never come out he'd be in beat saber heaven well, um, Metallica, you said, I, I actually could see that happening. I think Metallica had a rock band version out way back when. Mm. But um, that leads me into my next question. You know, here here we go. Uh, you know, we've seen these kind of packs before, but never from a, an artist as gigantic as Green Day is. These are legit rock stars, right? Mm -hmm. um, is this the Oculus Money rearing its head for the first time uh maybe i mean you never know i mean is it still i, I didn't check but is it still two dollars a a song or i mean i'm assuming it's not free that would be no. what would be amazing if every all the dlcs were free or something when i say the oculus money what i'm meaning is is they never were able to sign uh, uh deals with bands this big before but now oculus has bought beat games so it's not just these three guys from overseas trying to, to negotiate these deals true now it's facebook and it's that facebook cash uh going into the pockets of green day or at least that is my theory here yeah i guess that makes sense because even if they were still charging two dollars a song it's probably not quite enough to to lure in some of the big bigger names um and you know as let's be honest as it gets more and more popular vr um it's another venue that for these artists you know especially the ones you know i mean even if they're as big as green day it's just money's money and 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 you know i mean obviously their song their music must not be 
the best today if they're putting out a bunch of pop stuff but uh um it's really cool that uh that oculus is probably is helping them uh secure some some titles and i'd be interested to see what's next exactly um uh... So it says that the latest music pack consists of six Green Day songs. We have Fire, Ready, Aim, which I'm not familiar with. Father of All, not really familiar with that. I don't think. Uh, I'm, 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 I might know that one. American Idiot, I know. Holiday, I know. Boulevard of Broken Dreams, of course, I know that one. Minority, I'm not real familiar with that one. Uh, so it's about 50 50 there songs that I recognize versus songs that I don't uh, the 360 and 90 degree levels also launching uh, although Beat Saber tweeted earlier uh, in the day yesterday that PSVR would receive special 90 degree levels as part of the next PSVR update so I'm not quite sure if they're live on PSVR quite yet mm. uh, so roots big time changes to Beat Saber uh, both definitely for the better. Is this enough to get you back in the Beat Saber anytime soon? Uh, I think I am going to try the, the 360 mode. I mean, I don't know about the songs. I'm not I'm not hip on buying <laughs> buying DLC um, for music. But uh, uh, unless it's Autica, then it makes sense. But uh, no, I um, definitely want to try 360 for sure. So yeah, and, and these sorts of games, they're not really my thing. But I think that this... This might be enough to get me back in, even if it's just for to check out the 360 or the 90 degrees, you know, on PlayStation, of course. But uh, I think that the game uh, is different enough now from the last time that I played it that it might be time to give it another look because it looks really cool. Do you have this and, on uh, Quest? Like what they're doing? Do you have it on Quest? No, not yet. I actually have been considering picking it up lately because, you know, my kids are still just wearing that demo out and that one song, they just keep wearing it out. And, mm. you know, uh, so I think they would really enjoy it if I did go ahead and shell out and pick it up. All right. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for our news segment this week. Uh, did we leave out your favorite bit of news? You know, there was a lot happened this past week. We had to pick and choose what we covered and what we didn't. Uh, if there's something that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to, there is an invitation in our description down there so that you can come into our Discord. We're in there all day, every day with our group. Uh, what are we, about 90 strong right now? Yeah, groups? getting up there. I think it's uh, close to 80 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're in there talking VR all day, every day. So if we miss something here that you really wanted our take on, uh, come talk to us about it. We are extremely available and extremely approachable. Discord, the link is in the description. All right, Roots, that brings us to everyone's favorite segment. And I'm talking about, of course, the Monday show. Monday show 18 coming your way tomorrow in uh jam-packed one right yeah yeah actually there's a lot of good games like we said before that came out this week and uh um we're gonna talk about that a couple of them or actually three of them and uh um i think our topics are very i like our topic as well so yeah we, yeah we got a doozy of an episode planned for tomorrow or i guess monday i should say now um first of all a game a lot of people uh, are interested in a game that uh, I tried out on Tuesday. It was really fun. I'm talking, of course, about Layers of Fear VR. Uh, Layers of Fear VR, uh, an existing horror game on flat for many years, and a well-regarded one at that. Creepy as it can be, finally got proper VR support because this type of game, let's be honest, this type of game is made for VR. Uh, perfect for for VR, I guess I should say, and uh, yeah, ported really well from what I can tell. We're gonna play it some more. Uh, I think Roots may even jump into it for a little while, mm -hmm. and we're gonna give some impressions of Layers of Fear VR uh, to kick off the Monday show. 
Next, from there, uh, we recently gained access to a copy of Nevrosa Primal Ritual. And uh, Nevrosa is an interesting series. Uh, it had, uh, the, they've had a, one prior release called Nevrosa Escape, or maybe two. Did they have one or two of these already? I'm not sure. I, I know that uh, this thing looks really, really different. And uh, um, I know one of the, I think it was Driven By or somebody in the, brought it up a week or two ago. And we just haven't had a chance to bring it up. When the, um, the devs were nice enough to give us a copy and uh, and we're uh, going to check it out. Yeah, the, the early Nervosa titles were more uh, more horror style. And while this one seems a little bit more of a, a fantasy RPG style, so it seems like the, they're changing the theme up just a little bit. It still seems plenty dark, uh, so I think I'm going to like it as long as everything uh, runs as well as it looks. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So tune in on Monday to get our impressions of Nevrosa Primal Ritual. And... We actually are going to have a third game this week, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that one, Roots. All right, this game uh, just came. You like you said, we just for, first heard about it uh, on the awards show, right? And uh, right. never even heard of it. It's an Oculus exclusive. Um, I even just played a couple hours and and made a uh, um, first impression. If you want to check it out, go to my channel. It's a uh, Path of the Warrior and. Um, he said it's what, uh, I guess, Streets of Rage in VR, correct? Yeah, well, it's one of those style games. You have your, your Streets of Rage, your Final Fight, your Double Dragon. It's a beat-em-up. It's, it's modeled after the classic 8-bit, 16-bit beat-em-up games where you just go down the streets, go through these levels. Everybody in town apparently wants to fight you, so uh, you're just going to beat them up. And uh, that's the concept here. It's from Twisted Pixel, so it can't be half bad, right? No, it's amazing. It's it's got presence. It's got um, it's just really cool the way that uh, it makes you feel. I just like I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely different. Yeah, that's it, right? It's definitely different. All right, so those will be our three games that we're covering tomorrow. Laser Fear 2, Navrosa, Primal Ritual, and Path of the Warrior. That's going to bring us into our topic. And our topic this week is privacy concerns in the data age. So as with all pieces of software and all pieces of technology, I don't know if you've noticed, but the terms and conditions of everything you use changes every two to three months every app everything that you use online google youtube everything constantly have terms and conditions being updated that they ask you to read and you never do <laughs> and i'm just going to go ahead and give you the cliff notes of what it's saying we're taking more of your data we're watching what you do and keeping track of all of it uh do you mind mm -hmm. and of course all of us just click okay and go on about our days um Basically, uh, Oculus making a similar move this week by uh, the way that they're integrating the Oculus platform with the Facebook platform, which we were, I mean, we've said it from day one that uh, Facebook didn't get into this game to be the world's top video game manufacturer. The games are the carrot on the stick. They're, they're trying to build a social platform. They're trying to get people to live in VR and interact in VR. And uh, I think that the reason why they want that is so that they can mine the data. It's all about the data. And uh, they're, they're starting to take strides, uh, I think, in preparation for the launch of the Facebook Horizons you know, that's supposed to be out in a month or two now. Uh, but anyway, it raises some concerns. A lot of people are not so happy about it, even though it's completely predictable, even though every other facet of life does the same thing. For some reason, people are up in arms about what Facebook's doing. And there's some legitimacy to that, and we're going to discuss it tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe they've taken extra steps that others haven't taken up to now, and that's uh, 
um, the concern, you know, and there's other aspects of that data scoop that we'll discuss that has nothing to do with VR, has nothing to do with um, our, things you would buy, you know, um, things that are a little bit sketch. <laughs> so. All right, so we're going to have that talk tomorrow. We're going to talk it out. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I'm sure as with most important issues in life, uh, there's not going to be a black or white answer to it. There's going to be some uh, gray in the middle, and there's going to be some positives and some negatives. And uh, we're going to talk it out tomorrow and figure out how we feel about it. All right, uh, beyond that, uh, I keep saying tomorrow, I mean Monday. I keep forgetting that we're day we're, early. We're yeah. coming up early. Um, beyond that, if we have time, it depends on how long we run on. It's already going to be a long show. But if we have time, we're going to reveal the categories for the awards that we're going to recognize during the 2019 show at the end of the year. So uh, if you're one of those people who joined our Discord, who submitted possible topics for us possible categories uh roots and i are going to narrow those down this weekend come up with a final list of the ones that we're going to take votes on and we are going to reveal those during the monday show so be sure to tune in for that all right with that said folks i think that's going to wrap up virtual strangers 38 if you like this video you know what to do click the thumbs up and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up with all of our content here on the Virtual Strangers channel. With that said, friends, we'd like to thank you once again for watching. And for Roots, I'm Wes. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye. Adios.